interesting thing about my conversion to Christ was what was going on in the world. Revolution. Every man, woman, child on earth gets a free The Bay Area, San Francisco, was the ground zero of three major revolutions that were going on at one time. In San Francisco, he's in Hanoi. Two were very large and one was tiny. But out of the three, it was like I was at a train station trying to choose what train I'm getting on. Some of them were talking about how they were on communes and were visited directly by Christ and had no contact with church at all and they had been converted. So I was in the turmoil of that time and I think people today forget how really this anxiety and all of the cancel uh, culture and the 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 tremendous turmoil in youth today is nothing new. And at that time, uh, you know, we all had a, a, a thing called Vietnam hanging over our heads. And uh, it was probably the most chilling thing I ever read was my draft notice. And it was terrible. And young people were protesting. And so the assassination of John Kennedy had just happened. It was in uh, 63. I went to Woodrow Wilson High School in the, in the southeast section of San Francisco. And it was totally racially divided uh, because busing had just started. So the anxiety was very great and the racial tension was rising. We had just had major uh, riots. In, in the country, demonstrations. We had riots that were based on race. We had riots based on politics. So our school was deeply divided and four students were killed while I was uh, going to school there. And a teacher was thrown out of a third story building by the, by the students. They just opened the window and threw him out. We had times where the police literally shut down the entire school and we were, we were in lockdown. And so I'm going to school and uh, one day a blonde haired, blue eyed Norwegian walks up to me and says, uh, I want you to come to my church. And I told him I'm not going to your church. I gave him all kinds of excuses and kind of was not very friendly. Well, he persisted and then he 
question my manhood if I wouldn't go to church. Uh, back then that worked. It doesn't quite work that way today. But I, I went to the church and there was a sprinkling of elderly people and I was uh, maybe one or two other teenagers besides me. In this little Free Methodist Church, it was on Mission Street. It was October the 4th, 1964, on a Sunday evening. And uh, the, that night, they had brought in a team from Teen Challenge, New York. They were in town. They brought them out to the church. And I'd never heard of anyone getting off of heroin. I never heard of that. I, I heard of them getting on, but never getting off. And so there were these young men talking about how they'd all gotten off by the power of God. They got off of heroin. Well, that was very outstanding thing. I, I was wrapping my mind around it. Well, then the Spirit of God began to work on me. And it was interesting because the first thing I heard in, in you know, the impression that I was getting was, I want you to preach the gospel. It wasn't even, I want you to become a Christian. I want you to, uh, it was a, like, let's just get down to it. I want you to preach the gospel. So I was struggling. And they had had the appeal for people to come forward. And I didn't go. But they kept persisting. And it was, I was intensely overcome. And finally I bursted to the front. And that's when I was converted. And it, and it was instant, it was revolutionary, it was complete. I, it was, I think it actually scared people around me. So the next morning, I'm at school very early, and that's when there was an attempt made on my life. The material you're about to hear got me kicked out of churches. And I want you to know what that means. It means I've never fully been able to say what has been on my heart. I've never been able to teach it. The evidence, the truths, and the strat strategies that I'm gonna present are hated by the media. And most shocking is the fact that as I mentioned, churches did not want me to say to you what I'm about to say. So we're going to define firepower. What is it? It is three things, look at me. Number one, it is the number of weapons and ammunition in your arsenal. It's how many submarines, how many aircraft carriers, how many planes does the Navy have? How many munitions, the stockpile? Second, Firepower is the destructive power of that arsenal. How much damage can those weapons do? The third is the skill level of the soldiers who man those weapons. The reason America has been the military power of the world is because it has all three of these capabilities. Now they're trying to feminize our soldiers and make them into sissies that understand more about things that aren't military. But America has always steadfastly believed in firepower. The church has lost the voice of America and the church has lost its ability to destroy and tear down evil. Now, I want you to know that today we end that miserable record in America. We're gonna end it today. How many of you are ready?